The acronym AIS stands for Automatic Identification System. We at PSICompany.com are principally involved in marine-based AIS systems. AIS was created to give vessel operators the ability to gather and distribute electronic navigational data information to other mariners, including those requiring navigational data from those who may be out of visual range and those who may have geographic obstructions in their navigational path. Picture in your mind a modern shipyard radar or an electronic chart display or chart plotter that includes a symbol capacity for every significant ship within VHF radio range. Each is desired with a velocity vector indicating heading and speed. Each ship symbol could reflect the actual size of the ship with position to linked to GPS or differential GPS accuracy. By pointing and clicking on a ship symbol, you could acquire the ship name, speed and course, classification, call sign, MMSI, registration number, and much more. Historical ship's plotting information, closest point of approach, time to closest point of approach, and additional navigational information more accurate and timely than information available from automatic radar plotting aids could also be available. Display information previously available only to modern vessel traffic service operation centers can now be available to every AIS equipped as we will discuss. With this navigational data, you could hail any vessel over marine VHF by specific name rather than by ship off my starboard bow or some other imprecise means. Or you could access that vessel directly using GMDSS equipment. Also, you could receive from the vessel or send to the vessel short, safety-related text messages. The AIS is a shipboard broadcast system that acts like a smart transponder. It operates in the VHF maritime band and has capacity of conducting 4,500 navigation reports per minute with navigational update capacity every two seconds. It utilizes self-organizing time division multiple access, SOTDMA, modulation to meet a high broadcast rate potential, ensuring reliable ship-to-ship -ship or ship-to-shore operations. There is a wide variety of pricing and feature differentiation when it comes to marine AIS, as AIS falls into three distinct categories or types. First, Class A AIS. Secondarily, Class B AIS. And lastly, Receive Only AIS. Also, AIS is available with either built-in or display systems, or it can come designed to display its information on chart plotter, marine radar, or similar marine network display device. Each Class A AIS system consists of two VHF TDMA receivers, a VHF transmitter, a VHF DSC receiver, and antenna system, a standard marine electronics communications connections to shipboard display and sensor systems. Ship's position and timing information is sourced from a GPS receiver or differential DGPS receiver for precision positioning in inland and coastal waters. Additional data broadcast by the AIS system when available is obtained from shipboard marine electronics through marine data link connections. Course and speed over the ground and heading information would be provided by all Class A equipped ships. Other information such as rate of turn, pitch and roll, angle of heel, and destination at estimated time of arrival may also be included. The AIS transponder capability works in continuous or autonomous mode, regardless of whether it's operating in open seas or coastal and even inland areas. Transmissions use packet modulation over 25 or 12.5 kHz channels. To avoid radio interference problems, each AIS station transmits and receives over two radio channels. This allows radio channels to be shifted without communication loss from other vessels. The AIS design architecture provides for automatic contention resolution between itself and other stations, and communications integrity is maintained even in overload situations. If the AIS network gets overloaded with AIS navigation data, the AIS system begins excluding data from its furthest reception range. So for instance, if you're operating in a major metropolitan shipping harbor, you may only receive AIS data pertinent to operating in that harbor. As the AIS data transmissions lessen, the geographic scope of reception and transmission increases automatically. From a practical radio propagational standpoint, the AIS system coverage range is similar to marine VHF radio applications, essentially depending on the height of the antenna. Its propagation is slightly better than that of marine radar. It's possible for AIS to gather data in visually obstructed areas and behind islands if the land masses don't obstruct radio signals. A typical value to be expected at sea is nominally 20 nautical miles. With the help of a radio repeater stations, the coverage for both ship and VTS stations can be extended over several hundred miles. The system 
is backwards compatible with digital selective calling systems, allowing shore-based GMDSS systems to inexpensively establish AIS operating channels and identify and track AIS-equipped vessels, and is ultimately intended to replace existing DSC-based query systems. A Class A AIS unit broadcasts the following information every 2 to 10 seconds while underway and every 3 minutes while at anchor at a radio power level of 12.5 watts. The information broadcast includes the vessel MMSI number, which is a unique traceable identification, the navigation status, not only are at anchor and underway using engine currently defined, but not under command is also currently defined. It includes rate of turn, right or left, from 0 to 720 degrees per minute. It includes speed over ground to one-tenth of a knot resolution from 0 to 102 knots. Position accuracy, differential GPS or from other sources, longitude to one ten thousandth of a minute and latitude to one ten thousandth of a minute, course over ground relative to true north to one-tenth of a degree. True heading, 0 to 359 degrees, drive from a gyro or navigation input. Timestamp, the, the universal time to nearest second that this information was generated. In addition, the Class A AIS unit broadcasts the following information every six minutes. MMSI number, which is the same unique traceable identification previously discussed, with links to the described vessel. IMO number, unique referenced identification related to ship's construction. Radio call sign, international call sign, assigned to a vessel often used on voice radio. The name, or the name of the ship, 20 characters are provided. The type of ship cargo, there is a table of possibilities that are available the dimensions of the ship to the nearest meter, location on ship where reference point for position reports is located, type of position fixing device, various options from differential GPS to undefined, the draft of the ship from one-tenth of a meter to 25.5 meters, note air draft that is not uh, provided, and the destination, again 20 characters are provided, estimated time arrival at destination in month, day, hour, and minute in UTC. Now, up to this point, we've been talking about Class A, but Class B provides facilities not necessarily in full accord with IMO ASI carriage requirements. The Class B is nearly identical to the Class A, except that the Class B has a reporting rate less than that of Class A. For example, every 30 seconds when under 14 knots, as opposed to every 10 seconds for Class A. Class B does not transmit the vessel's IMO number. It does not transmit ETA or destination. It does not transmit navigational status, and it's only required to receive, not transmit, text safety messages. It's only required to receive, not transmit, application identifiers. And it does not transmit rate of turn information. It also does not transmit maximum present static draft. As you may recall, the third type of AIS is receive only. Receive only AIS is a much less expensive alternative to Class A and Class B AIS systems. This technology allows you to view all AIS transmissions on your compatible radar or chart plotter and or vessel network display device, but does not have the capacity to transmit your own position and data to the AIS network. These AIS units are available from $200 to $400 and come as either one channel or two channel versions. From an operational standpoint, it's well worth the money to consider the dual channel receive only device. You will also need a standard marine VHF antenna for the AIS receiver. You can't directly share the VHF antenna used by your VHF transceiver because when you transmit on the marine VHF, it would destroy your AIS receiver. There are automatic antenna switches available, but you're simply better off just installing a second antenna. We suggest mounting the secondary antenna four feet or further from the transmitting marine VHF antenna for best results. If you want additional AIS product information, please be our guest at the web URL psicompany.com slash AIS. We have the top AIS products available from the best manufacturers, including ACR Electronics, Comnav, Furuno, Garmin, ICOM, JRC, Raymarine, Shine Micro, Cytex, Simrad, and Standard Horizon. You can also call us weekdays from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and our toll-free number is 1-800-826-2907. We are here and ready to help you with any questions on AIS, including volume or fleet pricing. And we can also help you interfacing your AIS to other network devices on board your vessel. We came to work today just to help you with your AIS needs, so please feel free to give us a call. We'd be happy to help you.